Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Hydrosynth series. This is episode 8, Envelopes, part 1. So firstly, what is Learn With Me? Learn With Me is a series where you can follow my end-to-end -end process of learning to get the best of a synthesizer that is new to me. This is the Ashen Sound Machines Hydrosynth Explorer. It is a digital synthesizer with a lot of modulation capabilities and a polyphonic aftertouch keyboard. So far I've given you my first impressions, we've talked about the architecture, we've talked about the features of the oscillators, of the mutants, which are oscillator effects, we've talked about the filter, and now we're moving on to the first of the modulation sources, the envelopes. So first, what is an envelope? An envelope is a modulation source that proceeds through some shape in response to a trigger or a gate. A trigger is a message that says an instantaneous event has occurred. A gate is a message that says an ongoing event has started and then it has ended. So a gate is when you hold a key and release one. A trigger might be when you hit a drum. So let's have a look at one of the envelopes. In fact, we're going to start with envelope two because by default, envelope two is rooted to the VCA. Let me init this patch first. So envelope two, you can see there are several pages here, but the primary parameters you'll be used to seeing, this is an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. That means when the gate begins, this signal increases up to maximum level in the attack time then it decreases to the sustain level in decay time. The sustain is a level, not a time. And then it drops to zero in the release time once you release the key. If you release the key before you reach sustain, the release will occur. Even though these are set as times, logically they can be thought of as gradients. So that means if your release is five seconds long and your sustain is 100%, then that five seconds will only happen if the envelope was hot at 100% when you release the key. If the envelope was very low when you released it, it's not going to be five seconds any longer. But this goes a little bit further than the classic ADSR, but let's look at that firstly. Let's say one second attack. Let's say one second decay. Let's say release, one to eight is maximum. So let's say 64, I'm sorry, sustain 64 and release one second. So let's listen. So one second increase, one second decrease, sustaining, one second drop, as you'd expect. But there are two additional parameters available here, delay and hold. So delay is how long from when you press the key down does the envelope start? So if I set this to a uh, one second as well, then what will happen is when I press a key, you won't hear anything for one second. And one second up, one second down, sustaining until I release. The additional parameter you have here is hold, which I will also set to one second. So hold is how long after the attack phase ends will we stay at 100% before dropping? So in this case, we're going to have one second with nothing, one second ramp time, one second constant high, one second drop, keep it a sustain level until I release the key and then it will drop in one second. One, one second, one second, one second, and one second. So, it is a little bit more advanced than the typical ADSR envelope, and because we have multiple envelopes, you'll see that we have five of them here. Having this delay allows us to do things like one envelope does its thing, then another envelope does, and then another envelope does, so we can have sequential events happening, or we can have them overlapping or not. This is pretty powerful by most accounts. Another thing you have which is fairly interesting is BPM sync. So instead of setting the times, in um, milliseconds and seconds, we can set them in portions of a note. So we can have an eighth step um, attack, an eighth decay, an eighth release, and also an eighth delay, and an eighth hold. So well, let me turn the tempo down by tap tapping, tap tapping slow.
So um, you can hear then that this synchronization, BPM synchronization, you can imagine it can be convenient if we want certain relationships between multiple envelopes. Instead of thinking, oh, I need half a second here and a quarter of a second here, this is an easier language for typically musicians to speak. And note that the arpeggiator is obviously running in BPM sync and the LFOs can run BPM sync. So this allows for interesting and specific relationships to be formed without doing any mathematics or any complex mathematics. So the next thing you have here is the curves of the phases of the envelope. So the envelope stages, if the curvature is set to, well, let me just scan through. So we have exponential and we have logarithmic. So when you think about a curve in zero, at zero level, it's linear. Linear means that the parameter will increase with a uniform gradient. If we have a logarithmic parameter, the gradient will be higher at the beginning and it will decrease. If we have exponential, the gradient will be lower at the beginning and then it will increase. So we can choose whether during that phase it's going to be starting low and then going high or starting high and then going low. In this case, you could see that the default attack curve was a logarithmic attack curve, which means it gets louder quickly and then the loudness increases less quickly late. The decay and the release curves are both exponential, which means they drop quickly and then they level off. So um, we could, for example, you can see on the graphic um, an illustration of what's happening. If I hold shift, does it help us? No, not particularly. So now they're all linear. See if you can hear the difference. So now let's set those to extremely exponential. Do you hear that, that very aggressive drop there? Because the exponential is very sharp. i decrease it a bit. A little bit softer. And again, on the initial attack, we can hear that the attack comes in linearly. Let's try a logarithmic attack. It's going to come in very fast after the delay. And set it very exponential. It's going to come in late. But it's very punchy. So this can be very useful when trying to do things like um, percussive sounds. Next page, we have some options to control the triggering that is going on here. So legato triggering means if we're pressing one key, this is most useful in um, or often useful in monophonic mode. When you're pressing one key, when you press another key, it means an envelope won't re-trigger. Reset means when you run out of voices, when we reuse a voice, do we leave the envelope at the level it was and attack from there, or do we set it back to zero and fully play the attack out? Um, free running allows us to have the envelope complete its phase, even if it's only been triggered, as opposed to having to be controlled by the gate. And finally, envelope looping means that the attack, hold, and decay phase will loop if you hold the key down. So this allows us to get LFO type motion, but note that the attack will continue from where the sustain ended from the decay. So you're going to get something which comes up from zero, hold, decay to sustain level, up, hold, decay. So even though it only uses the attack, hold, and decay, the sustain level matters in controlling the overall shape of the envelope. This also allows us to turn an envelope into something logically like an LFO. So if we wished, we could have five LFOs. Next page, some more unusual parameters for a synthesizer. These are triggering sources. So remember I said that the, the envelope is triggered by the gate that comes from the note. Well, it turns out that there are other sources we can get gates from, and we can specify which of those will actually trigger this envelope. Envelope 2 is an, ex is an exception because we can't change trigger source 1. Trigger source 1 is always note on. Why? Because envelope 2 is normal to the amplifier, which means that if we don't have it trigger with note on, then potentially none of the keys will make any sound because nothing is triggering the amplitude envelope. So that is fixed. 
But let's look at the available values for the other ones. We can have notes on. Notes that if two things have the same trigger source, it can still only trigger once. So notes on. Elbow one, two, three, four, five. So we can have the envelope re-trigger in response to the LFOs. Ribbon on. So if you have the original Hydrosynth or the Hydrosynth Deluxe, you have a ribbon controller. You can also send ribbon messages through MIDI. So this is still potentially useful if you're controlling it externally. And sustain pedal on. So you have ways of triggering these envelopes, not just by pressing notes. So let me demonstrate one of those. I'll have it trigger by... LFO one, and yeah, let's just try it. So every time LFO one completes its cycle and resets, this is re-triggering. If I make LFO one slower, you're hearing that we're sitting at the sustain level. But if my envelope had no sustain, I'm waiting for the LFO to re-trigger, and it re-triggers. So let's make it a bit faster. And since by default LFOs are synchronized with the key presses, And you could imagine that we could have each of these envelopes triggered in some different periodicity, or these LFOs could also be BPM synced. Let's go back to the envelope. So finally, we have this uh, tap trigger. So this allows us to trigger the envelope. So rather than the LFO triggering it, I'm using this button to trigger it. So that's another convenience feature. So let's try and shape an envelope a little bit more carefully for our purposes. Let's imagine we're looking for a, a nice pluck sound. So for me, a pluck sound is going to have almost no attack. It's going to probably have decay and release equal because I don't want it to matter whether you release the key. I don't think we need any of this decay or hold. We don't want BPM sync. But um, since we've got, uh, maybe we should have, I think we should have almost no attack. And if we want some attack, we can have it to be logarithmic. And now these, I want to be exponential. So I want to see this drop and I want the decay and release curves to match. So let's just listen to that. I also just heard that the LFO was still re-triggering it there. So let's turn that off. So what I'm going to do now, that is the shape of the um, um, amplitude envelope. I may actually make it less sharp than that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filter envelope to have another one, and that's going to be a little bit more aggressive. So let's even turn this down lower. Let's set this to 16. So you should hear the difference. Much more gentle release slope. But this one, let's compare them. Um, I probably want... What I'm going to do is turn down the filter, and I'm going to turn on full... So you can hear that what, which is the sound of this attack. I want, it, I want it to be fairly short. Now, again, no sustain, and I'm going to have the same, the same length of the envelope. So, but I can have different curvatures. So what have we got? So this is curvature exponential 32. So it's a more aggressive curve. I think that attack, I don't need it to be so logarithmic. I need to have it linear. So 
So I think there you can hear that the different shapes of the envelopes, it can help us a little bit. It also might be interesting to experiment with what happens if we add a little hold. So this is pushing the drop back in time. We just experimenting with the delay there. So it's interesting, hopefully you can see that subtle changes can make significant differences here. Let's, um, let's go for a unison. Let's go for two notes. Let's have some of this analog fluctuation, one mode. That's too big. I think I prefer it in polyphonic mode, so let's go polyphonic mode. Um, any effects here? Maybe a phaser? First. So I've got a little bit of delay, a little bit of reverb, um, everything to go at the end. Maybe EQ, let's see how it sounds. Maybe a little more reverb. So now we have a sound which is relatively simple. It's just a basic saw wave. We have some effects added to it but the majority of the character and that plucky sound that we've developed is down to the envelope shaping. And I'm sure once we get into more in-depth sound design, we're going to be able to take advantage of the more complicated features. So let's play for a moment. here that I would like the length of that envelope to be changing as we go up and down um, to different pitches. So there's already things I can see the mod matrix going to benefit us, but I'm not going to do that today. Today I just wanted to talk about the features of the envelope and hopefully that you can see that the envelopes on this synthesizer are relatively featureable. I hope you've been enjoying the series, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, but most importantly I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me and goodbye.